Hi, in this video, we're going to look at the question, what's a logical test? So a logical test is really important if you want to master the if function in Excel. At the heart of the if function is this idea of performing a test. And there's various ways you can perform a test. And the first way we're going to look at is with comparison operators or logical operators. And by that, I mean these things here, greater than, less than, not equal to and equal to. Now you can find these on your keyboard. For example, greater than is shift and full stop. Less than is shift and comma. You should better find the other ones. You're probably used to finding equals and things like that on your keyboard. So let's get underway and let's see how we can perform some tests. So I'm gonna have two numbers. I've got 20 and 35. And I'm just going to perform a simple test. I'm going to say is 20 greater than 35? False, because it isn't. But if I change this to 36, it would say true. If this was 35, it would say false. Sorry, 35. It would still say false because it's not greater than. But if I had two 35s here and I said is 35 greater than or equal to 35, notice the equals there, then it would say true, because it's testing to see whether it's either greater than or equal to 35. If this was 36, it would be greater than, so it's still true. 35 we know returns true, but 34 will return false. So less than, so let's say I had 25 here, and then I've got 26. So I want to know is 25 less than 26? And it says true. And you've got less than and equal to as well. So if I had two 25s, I could say is this less than and equal to 25? Not equal to. Now you can do this with text as well as numbers. Let's do it with text to begin with. So I've got part one and I've got part two. And I'm going to say is part one not equal to part two? So you're comparing two columns. True. So there is a difference. Whereas if this was part one, it would say false because they're the same. They are equal. So I could do this with numbers, 25 and 25. They're the same, it'll say false. But if they're different, it will say true. And so the opposite of that to that is equal. And again, we can do that with text and numbers. So part one and part one. So are the two columns the same? True. But if I make a change, it would say false. Now you might be wondering, just looking at the spreadsheet, why on earth you would want to perform these logical tests where it is obvious that a value is equal to a value or greater than another value or not equal to a value. You can just see that by looking at the spreadsheet. So why do you need these results in this column? Well, I respect your question and it doesn't become obvious until you start using other functions like the if function why you need logical tests. Basically, with the if function, we can transform these true and false results to something a lot more useful. But we'll come on to that in later videos. Now, comparison operators are not the only way you can perform logical tests. Another way is to use functions. And in this sheet, we're going to specifically look at information functions. So not the only functions that perform logical tests, but they do perform quite a selection of tests. So they're very, very useful. Now, the information functions, if you've not come across them before, I'll just show you where they are. If we go to formulas, more functions, information, the majority in here are tests. Uh, the ones certainly that start with is, most of those are tests. So you can test, for example, for blank cells. You can test for errors. You can test for text values. Is there a text value in a cell or a numeric value? Is the value odd or is it even? Lots of different tests that you can perform. So for example, if I had the word goat in here, 
I might want to test whether that is a text value. So in this list, I can choose is text, point at the cell, close the bracket and it returns true. If I type a number in there, it returns false. Now the opposite is true for numbers. So if I said equals is number, that will give me true, but if I type go to there, it will give me false. Okay, so it's testing to see what type of value is in the cell. Uh, you can also test for errors. So a classic error would be like the div error, the divide by zero error, and I could test whether a cell contains an error. And also can also test to see whether a cell is blank. If I type something in, even a space, in fact, which looks blank, it would tell me that it isn't blank, give me a false. But if it is blank, it gives me a true. Now, again, you might be questioning why you would ever need to test whether a text value was a text value or a numeric value was a numeric value. Well, until you start using the if function, it's not clear why this is useful. So you need to go a little bit further down the journey to appreciate how these functions are really useful in conjunction with the if function. Now, if you want to perform slightly more complicated tests, you can also use and, or, and not. Let's see how these work. Basically, the and and or functions, which we'll deal with first, run tests simultaneously rather than just one test. So if I had two values here, all I can do is I can use the and function to perform more than one test. So I can say, is this value greater than 30, comma, and is this value less than 50? So I'm running two tests simultaneously. Now, if I press enter, I get true because both results are true. But if this became 25, then it doesn't meet the first test, which is, is it greater than 30? Now, because of that, it has to return false and will only return true if all the tests are met. Now, you can have more than two tests, but we're keeping it simple for now. And will return true if all tests are met. If you had 100 tests, 99 were met and one wasn't, it would return false. It's basically saying, is this test true? And is this test true? If that's the case, return true. Now, all works in a different way. If I have 24, 5, and 40. Now, what I'm going to do is just copy those two tests, but I'm going to put them in the OR function. Paste them in. Now, we know that only one of those tests, now let me just refer to these values here and just drag down. So, we know that only one of these tests are true. This one isn't true, and this one is but all will return true. Because what it's saying is, is this test true, which it isn't, or is this test true? So as long as one of the tests are true, then it will return true. So if you had 100 tests and only one of them was met, 99 others were not met, or would still return true. It will only return false if none of the tests have been met. Now, um, let's look at not, not slightly different. Now, what I'm going to say is, is this greater than 40, which returns false. Now, what not will do is convert a false to a true or vice versa. So if I said, is it greater than 20, which is true, not would convert it to a false. Now, you're only going to use that in a much more kind of complicated, logical scenario, as 
you would with and and or. So at this stage, I'm just giving you a preview as to these other functions that you can use in the context of logical tests. So in summary, what have we looked at? Comparison operators, this is probably the most common way of performing tests in Excel. Information functions, very useful for slightly more involved tests. And then when you really want to get onto more sophisticated logic, you need to learn about and, or, and not. Okay, thanks very much for listening.